Hey, what is up guys, Speed here, and today we're going to be talking about offlane starting items. This is going to be a new series on this channel. I'm going to be going from each and every roll, going to be picking out a bunch of pro matches and explaining why do they buy the starting items that they do. Today, we'll be primarily focused on Seb, but I will also be looking at the opposite lanes as well. I just happen to pick a lot of Seb replays. Obviously, he's one of the smarter Dota players, so I think it will be a pretty good example. But yeah. Let me know what role I should do next in the comment section down below, mid, safe lane, four, five. Let me know, comment down below, speed, should look at the starting items of Thompson next, or uh, Nisha, whoever it is, let me know, I'll get that done. And yeah, I'm going to be explaining in depth why they buy the exact items they do, and the way you do this is, you look at the hero, you look at your position for the enemy position five, and the enemy safe laner. Now, in pro matches, it can get more advanced than that, which I'll go into if it comes up, but nonetheless, let's hop right into it. After you click the like button, otherwise your uh, computer is going to crash. Also, I want to ask you guys a quick question. If you're interested in learning about the offlane, I recently just made a Bristleback course on the Game Leap website. And of course, there's also a ton of other content. I've recently also made an Immortal 2 treasure opening. So if you're interested in seeing me open up the Immortal Treasure 2, I also just posted that reaction to the website as well. And finally, the last thing that I want to mention is that you can sign up down below and I made a couple mentality videos recently. So if you're a player who commonly tilts, you know, you, you, you can't stay focused, you're struggling. Well, what you want to do is sign up to the website because I just made a couple videos. And one in particular is where I talk about how to learn and enjoy the process of losing, right? You need to learn how to accept losing. I go into depth about that. It's, uh, it's kind of like a motivational speech that, that will get you untilted. And yeah, go check it out. Click the link down below, sign up right away. And uh, I hope to see you guys there. All right, so we're gonna be going over five games in total. Let's start off with this game between OG and Fly to Moon. We're looking at a Dark Seer and a Clockwork to start. So, Dark Seer is a very unique hero in Dota as he buys kind of weird items, but let's quickly talk about it and look at the general items that he's buying. So, he has a Quelling Blade, pretty standard. Sometimes you won't see this if the Dark Seer is cutting waves. However, Seb buys his items based upon his laning game plan. So, as you'll see if we were to watch this entire lane, He's gonna literally lane, he's not cutting the creep wave, and therefore having a Quelling Blade is a necessity. Three tangos, because you're gonna be dodging the lane and you can buy this Ring of Regen to kind of substitute for the tangos, and this Ring of Regen later builds into a headdress, which builds into a mech. And then finally, a Clarity to pop right away after you Iron Shell a couple creeps, and some mangoes. Really nothing too insane here. I think Dark Seer is one of those heroes that has a very linear build every game, it doesn't change too much, you sort of need a Clarity, mangoes, tangos, and then the only two weird items here are this ring of regen, which is just good at building into mech. I think this is just purely Seb's opinion on how we can get away with regen and a quelling blade. Now the other player we're going to be looking at here is a very weird build from General. Um, <laughs> the reason why it's weird is what General actually does is buy a wraith ban right away. Now his starting items were six tangos, a circlet, branch, quelling, and a fairy fire. Right, these are his first set of items. And I think the purpose of this build is really just him saying, I want to man up, right? He knows at some point or another, he will get gone on, right? He will get gone on. And when OG goes on him with this Sven Grimstroke combo, it will be pretty all in, right? It will be pretty all in. And therefore, he wants to be as tanky as possible to man up. So going a Mango in this lane when he knows there's all in potential from the opponents could be a bad idea, right? Because then the, the regen isn't nearly as useful. Sure, it can top you off, which could help you in the long run, but having Fairy Fire and a lot of stats is also going to let him contest against the high damage of the Sven and apply a lot of aggression. This is a very good matchup, so all inning on some stats and buying slightly less regen can be good to win the early levels. And then yeah, let's quickly talk about this Wraith Ban because I think a lot of people are, are thinking about this item now. And funny enough, recently I was notified that this item now gives 1.5 armor. Somehow I missed this. Like, I don't know how I missed it. But yeah, this item gives 1.5 armor and it also gives agility. So Wraith Bands just give so much armor. I almost feel like this item is broken now. And I even was telling uh, someone who I was potentially going to coach that they shouldn't buy this item on Doom. Now I'm like taking it back. I want to take it back because <laughs> it gives a lot of armor. Like Wraith Bands, two of them gives you, th I was going to say three armor, but it's actually four with the agility and then all of the other stats as well, which is really good. It's really, really good. Now I could see why maybe he would go Bracer, but as I said, General's clear idea on this lane is that he can go very aggressive and go for kills, right? Also, if No-Tail and mid are going to go for a kill on someone, it's probably going to be the Lina, right? Just because she's significantly squishier. 
And so yeah, I hope that makes sense for the first two heroes. And very often, just because I'd like to clarify this before we even look at the rest of the builds, very often what pros are going is, is a lot in the moment. Like you see these two mangoes that General just shipped out. The reason why he's doing this is because he feels that he is about to hit level 3, he needs mana, and this is his spike where he can go aggressive. So, instead of buying something like a stick, which wouldn't allow him to actually go aggressive with this level 3 spike, it would take a minute or two for him actually to get any mana from it, he instead goes mangoes and says, okay, I'm hitting a very early level 3, I can apply aggression with it. And that's why it's in the moment, right? So keep that in mind, guys. If you feel like you have a certain spike, or the enemy has a certain spike in the lane, that's what you want to be thinking about to judge your items. Oh, and the last thing I almost forgot to mention is that Sven doesn't really harass too much early on. Like, he can cleave you and all, but uh, basically, like, you don't need to buy a Ring of Protection against Sven nearly as much. Alright, let's get into the second game where we'll be looking at a Slardar and a Bat Rider. Definitely very odd builds. Um, this current one we'll be looking at is a very meta build, though, from Seb. So, getting right into it, he has three Tangos, a Quelling Blade, a Salva Branch, and a Ring of Protection. And you just have to look at the other lane and say, okay... Well, what type of damage do they deal? So he's currently against, likely, what is going to be a Slark and Avenge. Obviously, these two heroes do purely physical damage. That is it. Right, and there's other lanes that are like this. Let's say I was laning against something like an Enchantress and a Lifestealer. I would also buy a Ring of Protection, because that's what the type of damage they do. So you kind of have to look at the enemy heroes and say, okay, what's their damage type? Ring of Protection makes a lot of sense. Even though Slaughter is a very high armor hero, six flat, Still, it's good for the lane. And now, uh, he buys a branch. You might be saying, Speed, he could have bought a Fairy Fire. Why not a Fairy Fire? Well, Slaughter is a hero that benefits from having a little bit of extra help when all landing for trades. Having the one extra attack speed can matter a little bit. The mana is better, and he does buy into a wand later on. I actually think he eats this branch in the landing stage. And then finally, a Salve. Why? Because with a Wind Ranger, uh, you're going to apply a lot of aggression. It's one of the things where you want to go all in. You're constantly going to be trading, and therefore buying extra regen just makes a lot of sense. And then next up, we have General's Bat Rider. Uh, honestly, I can't even say I love these items. I'll be perfectly honest. I'm not going to say I know better than the pros, right? I'm, that, that's never what I'm trying to imply with these videos. But of course, you can analyze and say, well, he actually gets stomped this game. So much so to the point where I made a video on it, not specifically just on General getting stomped. <laughs> but I, I did a full analysis over on the Game League website. So if you're interested in that, it will probably come out in three to four days. Just sign up down below and you'll be able to get that content. But he goes for a Noel Talisman Rush. Now, let's look at this Noel Talisman item and say, why is it potentially good on Batrider? Well, five in, two strength, two agility. Pretty decent stats as per usual. 3% spell amp, which, you know, makes sense on Batrider and 0.6 mana regen. Pretty good. The only thing you have to ask yourself, is this worth it over other items, right? Is the cost of Null Talisman as good as maybe, let's say, buying a, a Ring of Protection, right? Against something like a PA or a stick against a PA, right? This is a hero that spams spells. Grimstroke also can spam his Q. Should he have bought a stick, right? Should he have bought maybe a salve? And that's why, like, this is never an exact science. So if you guys think, like, oh, there's a way to figure out exactly what items the pros are going to go in your match or their matches just based upon this and this and this. No, it's just, it's a guess, right? It's it's an educated guess. And so here, he wanted to buy a Null. And then the reason why Batrider can go a Mango is because he thinks it's going to be a generally easy lane. At least it seems like that's what he thought it was going to be. <laughs> he ends up getting destroyed. But uh, it's a good thing to note, right? Maybe if he was to play this again in the future and he realizes that, hey, the PA in the Grim maybe has a lot more kill potential than I think, and the Doom can't really protect me. Doom, it's kind of hard for Doom to protect Bat, right? Because, like, Doom just doesn't have a slow or a stun. Then maybe he would go a Fairy Fire. Maybe he would go, like, a Bracer instead of the Snull. Right, guys? So Or even a Wraith Ban, right? Wraith Ban on Bat Rider doesn't sound too bad. Some attack speed for your Q and some extra armor doesn't sound that bad. It doesn't. So maybe he could adjust here. And yeah, I just want to get that out. Let's quickly look at the lane. Um, as you can see, he gets gone on very, very aggressively, eating Tangos right away. Uh, the sustain from the Mango is good against the constant dagger spam and the cues of the, the Grimstroke. But as you can see, the lack of stick, I would say, hurts him quite a bit here, right? He is getting quite a lot of spells casted on him and uh, ends up getting solo killed. And this is why generally when I'm playing Batrider, I personally buy Fairy Fires and a lot more stats just because people can go on you at level one and uh, your hero lacks a lot of damage. Now let's take a quick look at Seb. He doesn't actually do much in this landing stage. He plays it very, I'm not going to say defensive, but... He focuses primarily on just zoning out the Slark with his body, right? Just using his manly presence, which, you know, Seb definitely has. Definitely, 100%. Uh, but with his Slaughter presence, he zones out the Slark and primarily focuses on, you know, CSing and, and hitting the guy with Bash. 
which is kind of just what Slaughter does, right? <laughs> that's that's about it. So very standard build here. I, I don't think anyone could get confused about this. It's just it's a physical damage lane, and then you buy a bunch of regen. And well, let's talk about his next set of items. So he also buys uh, a bracer. Well, bracers are just kind of the strength hero item right now. Could you buy Wraith Bands? Yeah, I think you could. You definitely could consider that on a hero like Slaughter. But this is a chip lane, right? So Venge Slark, they're not going to instantly kill you, right? This is not a lane like Sven Grimm, when, where they go on you, they're going to try to do five, 600 damage, right? Could they do that with Slark Venge? It's possible if you're left alone and they could like slowly chase you down. But assuming Wind Ranger is here for the majority of the lane, what VTune is going to be doing is chip, hit here and there, right? He's going to hit, back off, hit, back off, hit, hit, back off, right? Like that that's all really Slark does. And so buying a Bracer makes a lot more sense, right? It's going to help him sustain a little bit better with the 0.75 HP regen. And then obviously strength is just good on Slaughter. Your hero is a natural frontliner, and it definitely will be the frontliner for OG this game. Their other heroes don't frontline, so having Bracers, it, it, it makes sense. Yeah. And yes, you can buy small items with the Foresight that you'll need them to make you slightly more tanky later on. But also Double Bracer right now is super strong. I think Seb goes Double Bracer if I'm not crazy. I know he actually goes Windlace, so this has been an item Seb's been buying a lot. I think he just believes its value, um, and yeah, that's going to be all for the second game. All right, next up, we have Doom and Slaughter, and I, I just want to give one more point for Slaughter. Also, he goes a, a much different build, which we'll talk about. But first off, let's start off with the Doom. So, you know, this is obviously a build that, as I said, is very common. Same thing as the last Slaughter game. Tangos, Salve, Ranger Protection, Branch, Quelling Blade, but what we do want to note after that is what he has queued up afterwards, which is a ring of regen, boots, and a bracer. And what Seb does here is he saves up the extra gold, right, by not buying the fairy fire, buying the branch instead, uh, which is pretty standard. And he devours the range creep, and with the help of the bounty runes, instantly picks up this ring of regen, which is a cool adaptation, right? Because whenever you go this build, you save about 45 gold from not buying anything, you get the bounty runes. And I think they got three this game. But yeah, it's a really cool build that allows them to slow sustain. And once again, let's look at the enemy matchup and look at his hero. Doom is a hero that slowly chips down in lane. Kind of similar to Slaughter, right? That you slowly chip down until you have a lot more levels. Then you can start to all hit. Same thing for Peel and Disruptor. You're not getting killed from full to nothing from these heroes. So having a ring of protection against Peel makes a lot of sense. Having a ring of protection against Disruptor makes a lot of sense. This hero uh, chips a lot, right? Right clicks a ton. Sure, it feels like Thunderstrike is the majority of his damage sometimes, but he does right-click quite a lot. And so, yeah, you can see the obvious clear goal of Seb here is just to simply sustain the lane. And this is, you know, where intuition and understanding matchups is very important on Dota. There's a lot of players who maybe would buy an early boots or something of that sort, and then you would lose the lane. You would die. But Seb understanding that this is a simple chip lane in which he just needs to sustain and, and zone out the opponent, he'll do much better. Right, and often that's what people don't understand. They don't understand that in Dota, you don't eat to kill people to win the lane. Right, I've been saying this since like the beginning of my YouTube journey. You don't eat to kill people to win the lane. Have they buffed it recently? Absolutely. Kills are worth significantly more. They're good. But with a hero like Doom, it is highly unlikely you're going to do that. Right, especially early on, it is highly unlikely. So just build items that allow you to deny creeps and get last hits. That is your pure goal, and that is what these items do. Now let's go a little bit back to look at DM on the Slaughter. He's against an Undying and a Juggernaut. And what he's going for here is kind of just a mixed stat build. As I said, guys, you can go different variations of builds. Now, Ringer Protection against Undying, I would say is slightly less necessary. And the reason why I say that is Undying is going to consistently reduce your health pool to the point where you kind of just want to avoid him in the early levels. You don't really want to trade much at all. Slaughter actually can. Especially when Slaughter hits level 2, Undying becomes relatively useless. And so what you can do is you buy extra regen, you become a little bit tankier, and you simply sustain through the early level. Also, same thing against Juggernaut. I'm not going to say Ring would be bad in this lane. I think him going the Ring build that said went last game would be fine. But at the same time, Jug is going to generally kill Slaughter less through right clicks, because Slaughter is a known Jug counter, just because Slaughter can punch Jug and do more damage than Jug can. The majority of damage that Jug is going to do to a slaughter is primarily through spins. So having things like an early bracer, extra HP, and a fairy fire is going to allow you to live through spin, right? It's it, That's what's going to happen. Also, he does end up buying a stick, and that's just because stick is good against undying. There's really, I mean, there's nothing else to say about that. I mean, don't overthink it. It's just, it's just good. And now one more thing I want to talk about before we end off of this replay is you can see that damage is ridiculous. It's honestly insane. 
But you can see DM gets gone on here, and because of his adaptation, he nearly lives. Does end up going down, right? But because he has a bracer, a stick, and took sprint at level 3, he nearly lives, nearly lives. Mid 1 barely gets him before he gets out of range, right? But you can see that the build comes into play. Obviously, once again, it's not a perfect science, but you're doing your best to adjust to the lane, and obviously, Ring of Protection would not have saved them there, right? It wouldn't have at all, because as I said, the majority of the damage in this lane is going to come from Undying Nukes and Spin, and yeah, he avoided the Undying for the early levels, and that's about how it goes. All right, in our fourth game here, we're going to be looking at Seb's Nietzsche's Prophet and Venomancer. Two range heroes, switching up a little bit, but uh, yeah, Seb here goes a pretty standard Prophet build, which is Blightstone, Regen, and Branches. Now, the most common build that I've seen recently is three Tangos, a Blightstone, and four Branches, and you might be asking Speed, why does he go with Salve instead of the extra Branches? And I have two theories. The first theory is that I have no idea. And the second one is that because it's a lane where he can go very aggressive, he's laning with an ET who bought boots. So like, they're likely going to brawl a lot, right? That's just going to be how the lane goes. They're going to be fighting a ton. So having a salve early on can help you sustain the lane. But usually the reason why you don't see salve, at least I haven't seen salve on the profits that I've been watching, is because when you hit level two, it's kind of like a backup salve. You level teleport and you go back to base. It's, it's, it's kind of just like a free salve. So... Yeah, I, I'm a bit surprised to see this out. I personally don't get it. Uh, I almost want to say I don't like it, just because I feel like the extra stats from branches can help you in the lane. But you'll see in a second here, he does end up needing the salve after going aggressive and getting chained in a creep wave. Uh, the salve ends up helping him out as he uses it when he's only level one and a half, right? So it ends up coming into play. As I said, I think the reason for that is because he knew he was going to go ultra aggressive, which is clearly what him and No-Tail were doing. So before we're going into the lane, he had already planned out with No-Tail his exact game plan, which is anytime Epileptic Kid walks up into the lane, we're going to go ultra aggressive, which is what they're doing. He's literally skipping the wave. He's skipping the wave, walking completely past it, and just auto attacking. Now, a good rotation from save ends up picking them up a double kill, but at the end of the day, it was space. I don't know why he didn't summon Treants here. I don't, I don't get that. Now next up, he ends up buying a wand. And this once again just goes to the all-in strategy that No-Tail is going for. Boots wand, they're just good trading items. Boots on a ranged hero lets you trade because it prevents people from closing the gap. Ember Spirit, you don't want them to close the gap, right guys? It's not good for profit. And having boots lets you go get more right clicks, right? If you're good at attack moving, you basically can triple your right clicks with boots. I'm not just saying that. It actually can be like that. And now finally, the last item that Seb buys before we go to the Venom Mancer is Raindrops. And the reason being is just because he's against the lane that's going to cast a lot of magical damage spells. Now, he ends up getting run down here pretty hard. The lane actually uh, doesn't go too well for OG. In fact, they end up losing this game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, somewhat of a hard stomp by VP Prodigy. So, well played to VP Prodigy, and now... Let's quickly look at DM. So DM this game knows he's going to be trying to go against the Wraith King. He assumes that his lane will likely be a Wraith King and an ET or a Wraith King and a Phoenix. He doesn't know for sure, but it will likely be against at least the Wraith King. In fact, you can see him running across the entirety of the map here. Now, let's get into his items. Why does he go with items that look so aggressive, right? Well, Fairy Fire, Branch, and Circlet go to help Venno actually get last hits. This hero's damage is beyond abysmal. And the reason why you don't want to buy mangoes is because you don't cast that many spells. Your hero doesn't really have mana problems, so you don't need mangoes for that. And against the Wraith King, your hero will always basically be on the offensive. There's very little situations where Wraith King can actually apply more aggression to the Venno than the Venno can apply to the Wraith King, so having items that make you deal more damage are useful for situations like this, right? A little bit of an extra attack speed, some stats, and damage. Just makes him zone better. Nothing too crazy there. And yeah, the, the, the extra regen is just good because I've said this earlier, I said it about the sub lane. Having extra regen and salves is not just for lanes where you're going to be pressured. It's also for lanes where you're going to go ultra aggressive, right? Like ultra, ultra aggressive. I kind of want to think back and give you guys the example where it was the clock against the Sven. I wouldn't say he was going ultra aggressive there. I would say he was somewhat in between. So him having six tangos makes a bit more sense. Now here, DM, I do expect him to go ultra aggressive. Like, I really expect him to all in. In fact, I'm even a bit surprised he took wards instead of Gale. Not that wards are bad. They have been buffed recently, so they are pretty strong. But I would expect him to just basically be hitting the Wraith King any situation he can here. Coming here, this might be the main reason why DM ends up actually going for the wards. His support TP is out, which we saw earlier, right? So having the Venom wards is going to protect you, right? It's, it's going to allow you to actually get CS and defend yourself as well as eventually apply aggression to the Wraith King when you get levels, right? Wraith King cannot kill the Venom wards 
especially when they hit level 2. When they hit level 2 and double in HP, nearly double in HP, it's like 90% more, uh, everything can't really kill them. And therefore, you can sustain your lane by yourself and do well, and that's really also the reason behind the Bracer. It gives you strength, it gives you HP regen, and he's playing a self-sustaining lane. Also, uh, there's a very low chance, I would say, Soxa and Wraith King run him down. It is possible, they do have two slows, and one stun, well the stun and the slow, <laughs> alright you get the point. <laughs> but nonetheless, DM's build is to keep him safe and that is exactly why he's going boots next, right? I, could he have gone boots first? Yes, but the Wraith King and the, and the Phoenix can start killing him when they both hit about level 3, right? When the Phoenix hits level 2 birds or fire spirits, that's when they can start looking to kill DM and therefore he'll need boots at that point to avoid them and just avoid getting gone on in general. So I like the item progression from DM here. I think Venno by the way is one of the strongest offlaners right now. So definitely consider going this exact build uh, that gives you a nice mix of regen and damage to help out Venno's kind of meh start. All right, and lastly, we have OG Seb on the Marana, and we also have another Doom. And what do you know, the Doom has a ring of protection. Crazy, low armor hero buying ring of protection. But for this Marana game, definitely a very, very weird build. Let's talk about it. So he's assuming his lane is in a dying Enersa. That is the highest likelihood lane, especially if it's, let's say this is your, your average pop. That's what it's going to be, right? So he goes three tangos, two fairy fires, and components for a bracer. Now, why is this? I really do believe that the purpose of this item build <laughs> is because he assumes that this lane will be very, very easy. Why? Because Ursa does very little to Marana, right? It's hard for Ursa to close the gap, especially with the Urshock nerfs. And Undying also doesn't pressure Marana that hard, especially if the Undying does not have a slow or a stun in his lane. So let's say the Undying was laning with a Troll or a Wraith King or a Sven. I think the Marana would actually have to buy a little bit more regen because the stuns and the slows would help out. However, Earthshock is pretty underwhelming at level 1, it doesn't help out that much, and overall I think stuns are just straight up better with Undying, so all in all, this is going to be a pretty easy lane for the Marana, especially considering it's a double range against Undying. Because it's a double range against Undying, what that means is they'll be able to work together. As long as the Marana and the Rubik work together to hit the Undying, uh, she won't get zoned much, right? So the Ursa can zone her, the Undying can zone her. So he really doesn't need that much regen. You still do want to buy Tangos. Don't be a psycho and buy like a Blightstone just because you think it's an easy lane. That's that's not good. And then yeah, to talk about the Bracer, like why Bracer over Wraith Band? That's the question, right? You have less damage early on. Well, you do kind of get the damage back when you get the completed Bracer. Marana does actually have sustain issues as a hero, right? Marana just in general can't really regen she's also pretty squishy and so when she does get hit she has a limited hp pool and yeah as i said can't really regen it so yeah having two bracers is good for the lane right gives you a bit of damage the sustain is good for a hero that lacks sustain and most importantly i do want to once again reference the fact that early game items are not just for the lane right i said it earlier about the slaughter the purpose of this double bracer build is not only to give you a little bit of extra hp regen in the lane it's also just to straight up make you tankier in the mid game this game, Marana actually might have to be one of the frontliners. Void being a frontliner of this game is potentially a really bad idea. He will just get doomed. Io could frontline this game. It is a core Io, just to be clear for everyone. It is a safe lane Io. So Io may be good frontline. It's still a little bit sketch, right? You don't necessarily want your Io to get doomed. I mean, not saying Marana wants to get doomed either, but he might have to frontline or at least sit towards the front this game. If he gets X'd and doesn't have HP, He's also instantly dead. So yeah, Seb having a little bit of extra HP and damage is good for the lane. And the last thing I didn't cover is the Fairy Fires. I think he just wants to do more damage. And he knows he's likely going to be the aggressor of this lane. He's going to be the one sitting behind the Rubik, punching me and dying while the Rubik sort of mans up. And finally, we have the Doom. Now, he goes 6 Tangos instead of Salve. And let's just talk about why. I think it's because he believes this is just a chip lane. Can an Ogre Magi and an Io kill a doom from full or can they even do enough damage to the point where he would want to salve i would say the answer is maybe if the phoenix leaves the lane let's say the phoenix roams or goes for a rune or something like that i would say that the io with the help of the tether slow and this orb of venom as well as like a ignite or a fire blast could actually yeah could actually do a substantial amount to the doom where he would need a salve however early in the lane if the creep wave is even no pulls have happened and the phoenix is just chilling next to him, it's unlikely that he'll need the salve, especially after eating the range creep. And so yeah, having the extra tangos against this lane makes a lot more sense. And so yeah, that's going to be about all for this lane. He does end up buying a stick. Um, honestly, I don't feel like the stick is actually that good. Y'all can hate me for saying it. I mean, Ogre does cast quite a bit of spells, but it's like, 
I would say it's like two a minute, which is decent. IO. IO casts like a decent amount as well. Probably like two a minute as well on average. So it's not a bad stick game. What would I maybe suggest other than that? Maybe the ring of region that, that Seb bought just to like be a little bit tankier, more consistently, right? Once again, as, as I said, this is a chip lane. So maybe you could have went the route that Seb actually did. And so, yeah, that's what I'm saying, guys. A lot of people look at items and they say, oh, there's an exact science, an exact reasoning behind everything. And uh, it's more of a guess, right? It's more of a guess. It's more of their feeling and their take on the game of Dota. So can you invent your own builds? Absolutely. Do I necessarily recommend you do? No. <laughs> But using the information you've gathered within this video, I hope you have a better understanding of these early common builds that you see within this meta. As you can tell, there's a lot of different builds. The Batrider went a Null, the Clock went a frickin' Wraith Ban, Amrana's buying Bracers, like what is happening right now? Uh, the answer is no one really knows for sure. So don't feel bad guys if you're a little bit lost within the builds that people are going. Once again, the best thing you can do is copy the build and then try to understand the matchups that basically shape that build because that's kind of the main theme of this video, right? Whenever I'm talking about the items they buy, more often than not, I'm actually looking at the enemy heroes and that's kind of what I'm doing every game on every hero for every item I buy. It's very often based around the enemy heroes and occasionally, very occasionally, based around my own teammates, right? Maybe I need to buy a Solar Crest to buff up my Medusa or maybe I have a, a PA who I need to buy a pipe for. I actually discussed that in a website video uh, that I talked about OG in. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And of course, of course, of course, of course, sign up to the Game League website down below right now. It is an absolute necessity. Otherwise, you're going to lose purely because of item builds. Uh, and, and yeah, that's just a fact. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dota or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. And that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're gonna see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it and uh, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.